everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Engine Gremlin. I am here with Rick, the owner of DC Racing Engines. DC Racing Engines is actually the machine shop that is going to be machining our motor and then building it back up and we're going to be dynoing. Uh, Rick, uh, thank you guys for you know taking on this job. Absolutely. You guys do great stuff. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and DC Racing but before we go get to machining well, the block. So DC was uh, founded back in the 70s early by a guy named Dave Capriotti. So I started working for Dave in about 1995 and uh, purchased a business here about six years ago. So I've uh, been doing this a long time myself. <laughs> uh, I was a part of the, the NASCAR Cup team here in town. We did their engines for a few years. We got lots of experience with what we do here. Yeah, so you guys, so, and I know you guys tend to specialize in high performance yeah. racing engines. So. Yeah, mostly, mostly race engines, but we do a lot of LS stuff and uh, just, Got more into the street performance stuff here because of the race engine kind of the racing industry is kind of going away. So mm -hmm. we kind of moved on, took our experience and brought it into the automotive hot rod world. So awesome. Yeah. Cool. That's so good. yeah, if you guys need work done on your racing engine or you know street performance, be sure to give uh, Rick and DC Racing a uh give yeah, them a holler. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Well thank you, Rick. Yeah, you bet, buddy. So before you can start building any motor, you gotta tear it down first, especially if it's a motor that hasn't been run for a while or has been sitting a while, or in our particular case, seized. And so that's what we started doing here. We started tearing down the motor. Now I immediately went forward and dropped a wrench in a big bucket of oil, as you can see here. But once we got past that little snafu, we did get the engine set away on the engine stand and we started tearing it down. Now today I was working with Jake, one of the employees at DC Racing, and over the course of the next couple of hours, we tore down the motor. So after taking some time to lubricate all of the nuts and bolts and giving that lubricant some time to penetrate and loosen up all the hardware, we set about going and opening or taking off the oil pan. Now once we got the oil pan off, we set about taking some pictures and making sure that all of the hardware in there was okay and noting the condition of it, you know, the camshaft, the crankshaft, looking for any broken pieces or debris that might have been left over in the uh, oil pan. You know, we're looking for the usual bad actors that make themselves pretty well apparent very early on. once we got the oil pan off, we flipped the motor back over and we took off the valve cover and then we proceeded to take off the head. Now to take off the head, the first thing you're going to need to do is take off the valve train. Before we took off the valve train, we did some cursory inspections, making sure that everything was still well lubricated, everything was moving freely, there weren't any areas of particularly bad wear, and taking pictures so that we could go and retrace our steps and reference them later. We got the valve train off, and then we took out the push rods, making sure to keep them in the exact order that they came out of the engine. And this is because when push rods are in a motor, they have particular wear patterns, and we also want to make sure that if there were any that had very bad wear patterns, we could identify which cylinder they were associated with. After that, we set about taking off the exhaust manifold, and the exhaust manifold was a particular booger to get off because, you know, being in a place of such high heat and all of those exhaust gases, the bolts were pretty well eroded, so we had a couple of them break off, and during the process, we had to make sure that we backed them out carefully as to not damage the block. Again, whenever you're breaking down a motor, make sure you take plenty of pictures, not just so that you can put it back together with all the correct hardware, but it also helps you reference what you did in the past, and if you're looking to troubleshoot a problem, you can usually identify it from your documentation. So, Make it a point to have good documentation and label everything when you're taking down a motor. We then removed the water pump and then finally took off the head and got our first good look at the cylinders. Now, I had already had a good look at the cylinders from trying to unseize the motor from previous uh, videos as you saw earlier. However, this was a good chance for Jake to finally get a good look at the pistons and see what we were dealing with and kind of identify the general condition of the motor. Next came the belt drives and the harmonic balancer. Then we set about taking apart some of the miscellaneous bolts that were throughout the engine block. We had one in particular, as you can see here, that was particularly difficult. It would just not come out. We tried a 12-point extractor nut, we tried lubricant, we tried heat, 
we just couldn't get it out. So that was something we were going to have to remove at a later date. And we followed that up with the timing chain and the timing chain cover. Once we'd taken about the entire top end, we set about taking out some of the freeze plugs and then we started working on the camshaft. The camshaft took a little bit of time and effort because it was pretty well pressed in there and the lubricant was so-so. Eh, but we did eventually get the camshaft out using a rubber mallet. Once we got the camshaft out, we set about taking the camshaft bearings out and examining them. And all in all, they were in pretty decent shape. There was a little bit of wear, but I'm 99% sure these are the original camshaft bearings that came from the factory because they're made of a bronze or copper material. And for a motor with 169,000 miles on them, they were in great condition. I was really surprised at just how good a condition they were in. After that, we set about removing the caps for the piston rods and the crank main bearings. And then we removed the crank and examined the journals on the crank. Now, all of the journals on the crank were in fantastic condition, save for one that looked like it had had a small amount of particulate that had gotten trapped inside the bearing and had worn a very small groove crank journal itself. Now this was very, very minor, nothing that wouldn't come out with a very light polish. After that, we set about bopping out the pistons using a hand sledge, rubber mallet, and a block of wood. Now those were a bit of a booger because as you know, this engine was seized. So they were in there, well, a little bit tight. But after a little bit of effort and patience, we did manage to get all six pistons out, making sure to keep all six pistons and their associated rods in the same order so that we could put them back in the engine if we ever reuse them. Now, fortunately for us, all of the rod caps, the piston rods, and the main caps are all stamped or marked or labeled uh, in their particular order so that when we go to put this motor back together, even if the parts have gotten mixed up, it should be relatively easy to put them back in the order that they were originally on the motor. After that, we were taking apart some of the more miscellaneous parts that we had gotten to during this engine teardown, making sure that there was nothing that we really missed. Then we just generally turned the block over, doing a general inspection, looking for any forms of disrepair or cracks in the block. Now, this block is going to get magnified, so that's something that we would get a greater amount of detail on, but it's always a good idea to do a cursory inspection of the block for any damage that might be in the cylinder walls or in the block or in the water jacketing, just so that you have a record of it. Once we had the motor entirely disassembled, we set about making sure that everything was documented, shooting a quick outro, and then we started putting everything away, making sure it was all labeled so that we knew what everything was and where it was at a later date. All right, everybody, we have successfully disassembled the motor, the entire engine here. As you can see, I'm here with Jake of DC Racing, who was a tremendous help tearing this block down, and I actually learned a couple of things along the way with him. So, uh, Jake, why don't you yeah. tell us what you think about the block, you know, state of the motor. You know, just kind of give us a quick rundown. I mean, we've got plenty of parts to go through here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really, it, everything looked pretty solid, honestly. Like, even our main bearings were pretty clean. Uh, the cam bearings were a little worn out, you know, but the cam looks fine. It looks more like a bearing kind of thing, just kind of ate it. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, uh, like, I mean, if we check the oil pump, the oil pump is a little stuck, yeah. probably just from all the stuff <laughs> falling in, you know. Yeah, um, I primed it with a drill, so I know it at least turns, but okay, it's yeah. a little stiff. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, like, push rods look pretty... Pretty clean, no insane wear or anything. So that's good. Uh, rocker arms look good. So yeah, uh, it's pretty cool, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was really happy. So I mean, going over here to the pistons. Oh yeah. You know, I was surprised to see that, you know, they have the, the copper or brass uh, bearings, you know, but they very well could be the original bearings for all I know. But, I, yeah, I, I mean, you see them. Yeah, I mean, this, so this motor has 169,000 miles on it. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so a surprising amount. Um, what I was really surprised though was by the mains. The mains look brand new. Really, really, really good. Yeah, um, there was the one. There was the, there was the one main. That one. Yeah, that has that wear groove, some kind of grit or something got caught up in there. And, but I mean, but, like, otherwise, it, you it, could tell it looks like a rock. 
or something. Something, just... yeah. And it didn't really scratch up the crank, so. No. Going over here to the pan. Basically, very light polish, and that thing would be fine. And, you yeah. Know, very nice. No, I can't even get yeah. a nail in the scratches. So. Yeah. That's now, cool. the, the exhaust, on the other hand, was disgusting and just full of rust and deposits and everything and the valve it's no wonder i couldn't get this damn engine to start i mean if you look up close i mean they're not sitting they're not sitting on their seats very good there's no way i was getting good compression so but overall i mean yeah i mean it uh it's very clean yeah for uh looks like it was outside you know it was in a barn actually so it, it had some but it wasn't it wasn't prepped when it was stored so um all right, we'll tell you what, Jake, what, you know, just walking people through of kind of what's next, you know, what are the next steps for this? Okay, so the next step, uh, once we get the rest of the stuff out of the block, like this plug and a couple dowel pins and stuff, we'll take it over to another shop who bakes it. Yep. And they'll bake it down to like just metal, like nothing but just clean metal all the way through. Yeah, it just gets vaporized. And then we'll magnaflux it, make sure it's not cracked. You know, um, and then yeah, we'll like and get with you with part on parts and stuff. Yeah, I got a few parts on order. Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, just gotta just start getting the rest of them in. I think the the lead time for the biggest one is gonna be the uh, rear mains. Rear mains are like April time frame because just there's no stock. Oh, pandemic supply chain issues. Just yeah, it's hard to get stuff. Oh man, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And again, thank you so much to Jake for helping tear down this block. Uh, be sure to check us out and leave us a subscribe and a like on YouTube. Uh, check us out on Instagram as well at Engine Gremlin 6. Uh, and like I said, thank you guys so, for much, so much for watching. We will be back here in the shop to help with putting the engine together after it's been cleaned and baked and machined. And, and then eventually we will come back for the dyno. But until then, I will see you guys next time.